as I mentioned earlier, Darlene will be presenting on supporting a successful sow through selenium. Welcome to the stage, Darlene. Uh, thank you for that introduction. Um, can you hear me clearly now? Yes, we can. Thank okay. you. Thank you for being flexible. Have you ever had one of those cases that have kept you up at night? One, one of those things that you know just doesn't add up, yet you know there has to be an answer somewhere? Earlier in my career as a production nutritionist, I had a challenging situation that fits this description. Too much mulberry heart in our production system. In my conversation with the veterinarian, feeding more vitamin E and selenium was a recommendation. The sows and wean pigs were already receiving vitamin E and the maximum allowable 0.3 parts per million of selenium from seleno yeast. And these wean pigs even had extra vitamin E in their nursery diet in addition to what was in the vitamin premix. But this was still not enough and we still saw signs of metabolic stress. This situation made me wonder if there was a way to set up these wean pigs for success by starting with the sow. When I walk into a well-run sow farm, I expect to see good biosecurity, ideal temperatures, good ventilation, and fresh feed. These form the basic foundations to support the successful sow. But how do we even define the successful sow? With pigs per sow per year? Number of farrowings over a lifetime? Milk production? Ideally, we would want all of these things and more. We all know that we want successful, profitable sows in our production system, but do we do enough to support the successful sow? How do we support her so she can overcome the stress of farrowing? Are we giving her the consistent nutrition to grow and wean successful pigs? Are we allowing her to store the important nutrients she needs for her piglets and herself? Are we giving the successful sow the tools she needs to thrive and give us better pigs and more longevity? What we are talking about here is providing more than good nutrition. We are talking about optimizing nutrition, per, the nutrition provided to support the foundation of our production, our sows. When I look back on that mulberry heart case, was I giving the sows the nutrients needed to support herself and her piglets? It's hard to say, but knowing what I know today about the variability of selenium products, I could have given myself the insight I needed back then. One thing I know for certain is I was not giving the sows the nutritional support she needed when she wasn't eating. And we'll talk more about that later. Good nutrition will fuel predictable profits for your production system as a whole. And we know that every sow goes through one or more events in the production life that has a point of high metabolic stress and she is not eating during this time. This event is farrowing. Farrowing is the linchpin in pig production. Without sows farrowing and weaning quality piglets, we do not have pigs to raise or meat to sell. Farrowing is also a high point of metabolic and physical stress for the sow. And ideally, a sow would go through multiple farrowings during her production life and to be fully and to be able to fully recover and thrive after this point of high metabolic stress. So let's talk more about what high metabolic stress looks like in a sow's body. During metabolic stress, the body produces compounds known as free radicals. And basically, these are unstable molecules with a missing electron in their outer shell looking to steal electrons from other molecules in the body. And free radical is an inevitable part of animal metabolism. A little bit of free radical production is manageable, and the body will mitigate this without an issue. The body systems, but the body systems can become overwhelmed when there is a lot of free radical formation, such as during and after farrowing. This can cause a drag in production since tissue development and repair will become more difficult. So how does the body combat free radicals? Antioxidants are critical in reducing metabolic stress and free radicals in animals. And these molecules include vitamin C and E, as well as selenium, copper, and zinc. Selenium is a key in multiple processes of the antioxidant system, and selenium is pivotal in recycling vitamin C and E. Selenium is also necessary for the function of glutathione peroxidase, another process to reduce free radicals in the animal. And all of these pro processes are necessary to control the propagation of free radicals. 
Since we know the act of farrowing is a low point of available antioxidants for the sow, really understanding these nutrients and the enzymes that provide antioxidant protection is paramount. As an industry, our understanding of these nutrients and how we can provide optimum versions of these nutrients and enzymes has changed over time and will continue to change as we study more about antioxidants and their role in farrowing. Let's take selenium for instance. Having a key nutrient available, having a key nutrient like selenium available during a time during a high stress point will ensure that the sow has all of the tools in her metabolic toolbox to mitigate free radical propagation and that her body is as close to homeostasis as it can be, even when the sow is at a point of stress. And we know we cannot supplement more selenium. Selenium inclusion in the diet is regulated in various countries due to the toxicity effects of selenium, even at low inclusion levels. In the United States, the total selenium supplementation is capped at 0.3 parts per million of the diet. This means that every molecule of selenium supplemented needs to be given in a form that the animal can use for metabolic use. To complicate things more, selenium has historically been provided in ways that have been hard for the sow to store. This means that we would need the sow to be eating her food each day to get the benefits of total selenium supplementation and the, anti the optimum antioxidant properties. Our industry is an innovative one. So we focused on things like shortening farrowing length. The shorter the farrowing duration, the less time she will be unavailable to eat. And offering meals closer to the time of farrowing. So she has the energy and resources available for farrowing. We can also rely on the sow's ability to store some nutrients for the time that she needs them. This will only work if we have supplied the successful sow with the proper nutrients in the correct form before she needs them. This means supplementing necessary nutrients in gestation and ideally guilt development. The more we learn about the selenium, the more we learn that it's a nutrient whose form is extremely, extremely important. Providing selenium in a highly bio bioavailable form can allow for optimum usage and even storage within the body for a point for high stress periods and antioxidant protection. The first source of selenium that most nutritionists are familiar with is sodium selenite. This was first introduced in diets in the mid 70s and 80s, and this was the first form of selenium available to the market. This is a mineral form of selenium and a byproduct of copper refining. This is an inexpensive and readily available product. Sodium selenite will keep classical deficiency signs away, but this form of selenium cannot be stored. It allows for the animal to survive, but not thrive. A successful sow needs to be given the tools to do more than just survive. She needs to thrive. The second form of selenium that is available for nutritionists is seleno yeast. This is a type of selenium where yeast are given high levels of sodium selenite or other inorganic form of selenium to incorporate selenium into the yeast own tissues to hopefully convert that inorganic mineral selenium into an organic form of selenium that is more available to the sow when she needs it. Seleno yeast is a more available form of selenium than sodium selenite and our industry has realized these benefits. Still, seleno yeast has clear disadvantages. In particular, Seleno yeast is highly variable in quality. Quality variability with seleno yeast stems from two primary mechanisms. The first is that various fermentation factors, such as yeast strain used, base medium, and incubation time, temperature, etc. The second mechanism exists because there's only so much selenium that the yeast can incorporate into their own tissues. Hence, the conversion of inorganic selenium to organic selenium is incomplete and cannot reach 100%. This aspect makes choosing a consistent seleno yeast difficult for nutritionists to do without continuous product testing. In addition, yeast fermentation during seleno yeast production means that several types of selenium products are produced. It's important to understand that all of these selenium products are not created equal. Products like selenocysteine cannot be utilized in the body any better than sodium selenite. So even though this type of selenium is technically an organic form of selenium, 
because the selenium is incorporated into an amino acid, the body still metabolizes selenocysteine as an inorganic form of selenium. Furthermore, it cannot be consistently depended upon when the sow is not eating. Seleno yeast can also produce elemental selenium, selenium that cannot be utilized by the sow. This elemental selenium can be misinterpreted as organic selenium with traditional analysis methods and can result in organic selenium being overestimated in yeast. One of the most beneficial components of seleno yeast is selenomethionine, a highly effective means of supplementing selenium for the sow. In more good news, selenomethionine can be incorporated into the general pool when not being utilized as selenoproteins, making selenomethionine less toxic than traditional selenium sources. And while selenomethionine is the active ingredient in seleno yeast, its concentration can be highly variable. When Adiseo has had seleno yeast sources analyzed, it found that selenomethionine content can be as low as 20% and as high as 70% of the total selenium in seleno yeast. However, 70% selenomethionine in seleno yeast is the extreme exception and most seleno yeast do not meet this standard. This means that even in the best case scenario, over 30% of the selenium supplemented from seleno yeast is in a form the body cannot store, resulting in a gap in providing optimum selenium supplementation. So what type of selenium do we want to supplement? Today's research shows that selenomethionine or hydroxyselenomethionine to be the optimum form of selenium supplemented. Selenomethionine and hydroxyselenomethionine are now available as chemically synthesized molecules, meaning that their consistency far outperforms other selenium sources. Hydroxyselenomethionine, marketed under the brand name Silicio, is 99.3% hydroxyselenomethionine at minimum. This gives the most consistent source of selenomethionine on the market. And this consistency is key to meet the sow's daily selenium needs and providing additional selenium to be stored by the sow. So she, so the sow can transfer selenium to her offspring, both in utero and through the milk. So let's dig a little bit deeper into the pathways of how selenium sources are metabolized. Traditional selenium sources can be metabolized in one of two ways, being incorporated into selenoproteins or excreted through the urine. This does not allow selenium to be stored for later use. And selenoproteins are proteins that need selenium to function. And these selenoproteins have various functions that include thyroid hormone regulation, peroxide detoxification, protein folding, and other functions. Selenomethionine and hydroxyselenomethionine can be metabolized through a third pathway where they can be incorporated into the tissues as methionine. Practical supplementation levels are not high enough to interfere with tissue function from the substitution. And this allows selenomethionine and hydroxyselenomethionine to be incorporated into tissues like muscle and milk. Selenomethionine and hydroxyselenomethionine have been shown to increase muscle selenium over sodium selenite, seleno yeast, and selenocysteine. And this is not typical metabolic storage. So for example, when a sow is not eating, muscle breakdown or catabolism will occur, and this will release selenium to be utilized for selenoproteins. Because hydroxyselenomethionine is incorporated into the general protein pool, such as muscle, milk, and other tissues, this means that there is more selenium transferred to the piglet via milk. And this will allow piglets to have more selenium at weaning to handle the stress of weaning as well. There is also more selenium in the muscle that can be utilized when the sow needs it during farrowing and lactation. This also means that selenium-dependent proteins like glutathione peroxidase and selenoprotein P are at higher levels compared to sodium selenite supplementation. So how do I, as a nutritionist, support the successful sow? I support the successful sow by using a selenium source that consistently offers what the sow needs, antioxidant protection with storage for times for metabolic stress and increased free radical production. 
When I evaluated what I experienced in the production system with Mulberry Heart, I knew I was not getting the most out of the Seleno yeast I was using. I didn't have the consistency in my system I should have. I saw clear signs in my system that there was an overload of free radicals with Mulberry Heart. And I didn't know if I was getting a 20% selenomethionine product or a 70% selenomethionine product month to month. Adding hydroxyselenomethionine to the mineral premix gave me the peace of mind that I wouldn't have to worry about selenium in the feed anymore. I was feeding a safer, more consistent, more biologically available product than anything else on the market. And I knew I was feeding the sows to be successful and wean quality piglets. Today, as nutritionists, we have access to more research than ever before on caring for our sows, and specifically helping sows manage metabolic stress. I'd like to encourage my fellow nutritionists to move beyond formulating on total selenium alone. And furthermore, we should move on from formulating on organic selenium. To support the successful sow, a nutritionist should be formulating on selenomethionine content in their mineral premix specifications. This will ensure that as a nutritionist, you are getting the active selenium product, selenomethionine. Not only will this support the successful sow, but also fuel predictable profits for your production system as a whole. Thank you. Thank you, Darlene, for a stimulating discussion and overview of selenium metabolism, very critical nutritional area. Uh, this, doesn't look like we have any questions from the audience, but let me just ask you one from your background. Obviously, one of the key indicators in my mind of successful sow operations is what am I doing to increase milk yield, mm -hmm. translating into heavier wean pigs. I think our industry is focused a lot on wean, but then we tend to have more variability. And if the idea is, can you help me produce more milk and potentially colostrum uh, with, with this kind of technology? Um, yeah, I think to, to answer your question of how do we, um, get more milk out of the sows, because then if the sow's producing more milk, um, the piglets should be larger. Um, I think that's producing more milk is, is one aspect, but I think it's also increasing milk quality. Um, and one way is that hydroxyselenomethionine marketed under the name Silicio does that is by adding more selenium to the milk. So then the piglets have um, adequate selenium supplementation to be able to utilize for their own selenoproteins, for their own antioxidant capacity. Um, and then therefore when they're weaned, they have the things that they need to, um, to handle the stress of weaning because we know when pigs are weaned, um, they don't eat. And if they're not eating, they're not getting that nutrition in, in the feed bin. And that's where something like a storage of selenium helps the weaned pig as well. Um, and I know that we do have some recent studies uh, that were shared during the break that did show that when Cilicia was supplemented, that there was uh, more uh, heavier pigs at weaning, which again is very cr critical. Thank you very much for your contribution to today's program, and thanks so much for your presentation.